My dad and I fight a lot about politics. I, I, I was a big Bernie Sanders fan. And uh, yeah, that's everyone who voted for him. And <laughs> my, 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 my dad would always tell me, you know who else supported Medicare for all? Adolf Hitler. And I was like, not for everybody. <laughs> I tried turning him into a socialist. I told my dad, I said, give me one good argument against giving people free access to a college education. And he sent me a link to my website. <laughs> I felt the burn. <laughs> and now my dad won't shut up about drag queens. That's, that's the new target for the right drag queens. They say drag queens are groomers or they're pedophiles, which is nonsense. If drag queens were fucking your children, your kids would be covered in glitter. <laughs> It would be the shortest episode of Law & Order SVU of all time. They'll go, there's the crime scene. There she is. <laughs> drag queens don't deserve this shit. You know how hard it is to be a drag queen. They gotta put on fucking intricate makeup, fancy wigs, fake tits. They're tucking their dick, they're strapping it. They got spanks and tights and spanks. Even if a drag queen wanted to fuck your kid, you have like six hours to stop it from happening. <laughs> because that dick's not coming out ready to go. You understand? It's like, it's like a mattress coming out of a box for the first time. <laughs> It's gotta inflate before fucking, that's the point. You wanna stop pedophilia? Figure out a way to get glitter onto priests, okay? <laughs> Pretend it's part of the Eucharist, the, the body, the blood, and the bedazzlement. <laughs> I know not everyone likes Catholic Church jokes, but like their victims, they never get old. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> Performing in a wood shop. I kind of feel like Pinocchio. But instead of wanting to be a real boy, I want to perform in a real venue. <laughs> I was in Oklahoma City, and I'd never been before. So I asked the owner of the comedy club in Oklahoma City, I was like, hey, is there a good place to get a salad around here? And he was like, it's a pretty conservative area. <laughs> that should not make sense. But that's how divided we are as a country. Then I was like, well then fuck salad, I'm getting barbecue and fentanyl. <laughs> and I know fentanyl's more bipartisan in Los Angeles, but the other part's true. If I'm in a new city, I look up how many Planned Parenthoods they have. Because if there's none, they bring that pulled pork to term. <laughs> I was obviously very upset when Roe v. Wade got overturned because I, I have three little sisters who should have been aborted. <laughs> but you knew I was pro-choice because I was pro-Medicare uh, for all. There's certain beliefs that just go together with other beliefs, right? Like, like there's no such thing as a sexist trans ally. I, I, I've never met anyone who's like, trans women are women and they belong in the kitchen. It's never happened, not once. I think it would be fun if we mix it up a little more. Like, wouldn't you love to meet like a homophobic vegan? Who's like, being gay is unnatural, now pass the tofurkey, homo. Or a polyamorous nun who's like the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost at the same time. I don't care if it makes sense. Let's get a black Nazi. I'd love to meet Kanye. Can you imagine how bummed Hitler would be to meet his biggest fan right now? I hope I didn't offend any, any of you. That's, that's, my parents raised me better than that. I, I remember when I was a little kid, my mom was driving me to ballet practice and shut the fuck up. And Mark Anthony was playing on the radio and, and I, I've always been a big Mark Anthony fan. So I was like, mom, turn it up. It's Mark Anthony. I love Mark Anthony. My mom was like, sweetheart, no, that's not Mark Anthony. That's Enrique Iglesias. And I gotta remember, I was a little kid. So cut me a little slack. I was like, they all sound the same. <laughs> My mom turned off the radio. She said, John Marco, that is racist. I don't ever want to hear you talk like that again. She turned the radio back on and the DJ was like, that was Ricky Martin with Live in La Vida Loca. <laughs> I want to be a good white. <laughs> but it's tricky sometimes. <laughs> like I live in a neighborhood in New York called Harlem. 
And if you don't know Harlem, it's a historically black neighborhood. I live across the new Whole Foods on Malcolm X Boulevard, <laughs> which is what he would have wanted. <laughs> and I was in Harlem for all of 2020. I, I was there for the Black Lives Matter movement. And I, I remember going online looking for ways to help and, and, and some people were like, checking on your black friends and other people were like, leave your black friends alone. And I remember thinking like, I gotta get some black friends. But I, <laughs> I, I did the marches, of course. And, and I remember the last march I did, we, we were going down Malcolm X Boulevard and, and, I, and I was doing, I was doing all, all, all the chants, you know, we were going like, black lives matter and no justice, no peace. Fuck these racist ass police. And then we got to the block where I lived and everyone started chanting, hey, hey, ho, ho, these gentrifiers have got to go. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever had a march turn against you <laughs> while you were in it. <laughs> but I did what all white liberals do when we find out we're part of the problem. I chanted harder. <laughs> the first white guy I saw coming out of Whole Foods, I was like, you don't belong here. <laughs> Which really confused him because he was my roommate. <laughs> and he was like, Jamarco, what are you doing? I was like, Jamarco, oh, do we all look the same to you? <laughs> That's my time, guys. Thank you very much.